I'm going to give you a word. The word is splash art. When you think of it, what comes to mind? It may be this, or this, or maybe even this. Whatever the case, splash art is very important in media's advertising. It should communicate to the viewer exactly who or what the image is easily, and draw the viewer in with talented artwork and design. If you were to Google Splash Art, you might be surprised that almost 90% of the search results are only for one game, that game being League of Legends. League of Legends is mostly well known for its large fan base, its competitive esports play, and most notably, T1 has been unbanned from League of Legends. It's infamy in the gaming community. I started playing a while ago, and the thing that drew me in the most was its art direction and character design. League has an incredible art direction. With 144 playable characters as of Yumi, the magical cat, it's surprising to me how unique each one is. No two characters look exactly alike, and that's what I appreciate. When a new champion comes out, or a rework of an old champion, League has multiple ways of getting players to become interested in them, and getting them to want to play these characters. They do teaser images, small easter eggs, and when the character is released, they do promotional videos and ability overviews. But the thing that draws me in is the splash art for these characters. These art pieces can be the coolest things I've ever seen. Heck, I even have them as my wallpapers for my PC, too. So today we're going to talk about League's splash art, how it works, and how it can convey a theme. League has established a design direction that works a bit like this. When you look at a champion, it should instantly communicate to you what this character does, what their personality is, and how they may attack their enemies. There are characters in this game that can easily show happiness, sadness, fear, and superiority. All of this is communicated through their design, posture, and color choices. Zoe is a youthful appearance with a color scheme that indicates her bubbly personality, which works because she literally has a bubble as one of her abilities. Azir, on the other hand, is a king. He stands upright with his chest always pushed outwards. His colors communicate this by being regal tones of gold, red, and purple. The areas of this game's lore also communicate a character's background as well. This one is from Demacia, this one is from Freljord, and this one is from Zaun. Just by looking at these characters and seeing not their names, but the names of where they're from, can also easily communicate what these areas are like. And it does very easily! Garen is from Demacia, a place of kingly service and royalty, while Urgot is from Zaun, a place of filth, experiments, and plague. The more you look at a character's design, it's easy to see where they may come from if you become familiar with the areas of League's world. The next thing we are going to cover is how a character's splash art can easily tell their story. One single art piece has to be able to tell the story of a war general with a dark power hidden inside of him, or a bright inventor that may need to work out the kinks in his creations. To further explain, I'm going to have an actual Riot artist tell exactly what they look for in creating a character's splash art. What is splash art? Well, uh, splash art is actually a particular type of illustration. For us, splash art is the definitive visual portrayal of a champion in the highest fidelity. Uh, it's kind of like a window into a champion's narrative uh, and place in the world, uh, something that just simple in-game models can't quite do. From that single clip, Evan told us multiple key points to making a character's art believable and easy to read. It has to showcase a character's look, feel, and fantasy, it needs to be a champion in their highest fidelity, and it needs to tell their story in a way a character's model cannot. I'm going to show an example of a splash art that conveys a character's story excellently, and one that needs some more work and just falls short. Now, please keep in mind that I'm not judging the art skill of these pieces. Every splash art in League is made by talented artists who get paid to do this. Judging their splash art based on art skill would be unfair. I'm only going to be judging how well the character is conveyed in these pieces, and I am in no way intending to discredit the time and work it takes to produce a splash art for a champion. And with that, let's move on. The first art piece we're going to look at is the one for Evelyn. Her title's name is Agony's Embrace. Now, based on her design and her title, we can narrow down exactly what her character may be. If it wasn't already obvious, Evelyn is not human. She is an immortal demon, who
who roamed the world before humans without purpose. When humans appeared on Earth, she witnessed them clash in wars, murdering each other on sight. This awoke a carnal feeling in her, and she now looks for humans to get seduced by her attractive feminine appearance, only to get brutally murdered and have their essence drained. She feeds off of agony, no matter the gender or species. Don't worry, honey. I'm open to all types. Now let's put up some key points we know about her. Evelyn is a demon, she seduces and murders people brutally, and she is evil and deceiving. I'll also add in that she is a sexually liberal character. This is by no means a bad thing, and adding this can further develop her personality. Now let's go back to her splash art. Does it convey that Evelyn is not human? Yep. Does it show that she seduces and murders people? Yes. And does it show that she is evil and unpredictable? Well, based on her expression and her finger up to her lip in a did I do that pose, I would say absolutely. Her sexuality is also easily portrayed by her dominating appearance over her victim and her non-existent need to wear clothes, but to let the shadows envelop her body. All of this is absolutely crucial in communicating her character, and this is done excellently. Now, besides just Evelyn, let's take a look at the rest of the scene. What do we see? Well, we see the moon, which means it's night, a perfect place for a seductive demon to stalk her prey. The buildings communicate that it's not futuristic, so it's most likely a kingdom. There is a large doorway, and what appears to be a person restraining multiple guards with their weapons ready, most likely in an attempt to slay Evelyn. Let's not forget her victim, which appears to be a long-haired man. Wait, what's that? It, it kind of looks like a crown? Oh wait, this guy is actually a king. And his queen is in the background trying to stop her guards from getting killed by Evelyn. That's what makes this splash art amazing. Evelyn would even topple a kingdom by killing their ruler just to get what she desires. Human essence. This is what makes her truly dangerous, and thus what makes her splash art easily communicate her character, all in perfect dark wickedness. Lastly, we have Jax, a character whose art, to me, fails to portray how he truly is. Now, I will say that Jax is also a rather old champion, and his splash hasn't been touched in a long-ass time but I feel like his art should be revisited just based on how insane this character's lore is. This guy's title is the Grand Master at Arms. And trust me, his lore lives up to it. Jax is a warrior at heart. He is the last known weapons master from Akathia, his homeland that was destroyed by the Void. Now he roams the world as a type of nomad. But that's not what makes him interesting. What makes him so cool is the fact that he's downright the best and most skilled fighter this side of Runeterra. His lore reads that he is virtually skilled in every weapon ever made or crafted, and he has bested thousands of opponents. He is just so good that he decided to wield a lamppost to give his opponents a fighting chance. That is awesome. But what does his splash art show? Standing still, looking at the player, holding his lamppost, lackluster background. Okay, what about his skins? Standing still, looking at the player, holding his lamppost, lackluster background. What is this? This, and I quote again, is the Grand Master at Arms. He should be shown as a Grand Master! At arms! <sighs> well, let's try to give Jax the awesomeness he deserves by attempting to interpret his story through his splash art. Let's begin by bringing up key points about his character. He's a weapons master, he's a lone wolf, he's bested many opponents, and he has a simple object as his weapon to give his foes some chance at beating him. I feel like his splash art should be centered at a downwards angle. This can communicate how powerful he is. He should be using his lamppost to the best of his ability, and multiple people should be around trying to take him down, only for them to fail. And Jax knows this. He can probably tell a person's strength just by looking at them. These are a couple of my interpretations that I drew myself, but leave a comment down below on how you think Jax should be portrayed. I have a couple more character splash arts that I want to talk about and how they fail to represent the characters in them, but I'm not going to do it in this video, because the video would end up being too long to post. I hope you guys enjoyed this small talk about splash art and how it can portray a character really well, or not at all. If you have a character from a MOBA or any other game that uses art to advertise their roster, 
please let me know in the comments about your favorite art pieces, or ones that are a bit lame to you, and I'll take a look, and I'll see you all in the next video. See ya!